For me, I go two fingers up. I use my thumb a lot, but that finger, you try to lock against the seam. Yeah, I have another one where I lock that third finger in there as well, so I can get over, again, try to throw a bigger googly, really. I have another one, again, like the googly, similar grip to the googly, but I push so it comes out, out the front more, or like off the side of my hand. It just depends how I want to bowl it, really. And for me, it's about accelerating when, as soon as my front foot hits, accelerating to whip, whip over the top and drive and pivot. Cricket Last Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today at the Oval, we're joined by Nathan Sauter. Nathan, how's it all going? Yeah, good, thanks for having me. How's the 100 been for you so yeah, far? Yeah, it's been a blast so far. It's started off really well. We've got a few games left, so we'll see where we end up. I'm just gonna give a few tips for aspiring leg spinners. Does it all start with the grip? And obviously there's a lot of variations that go into it, but maybe you can just show, maybe for a, for a young player that wants to get into the art, yeah. uh, the traditional grip. Yeah, for me, I hold it, I think, a little bit different to some because I've got quite a small hand. So for me, I go two fingers up. I use my thumb a lot, but that finger, you try to lock against the seam, which I, which I struggle to do a little bit. But you can kind of see there, that's the kind of traditional grip, but I kind of keep mine a little bit more open so I can use every, a little bit more of, of my, obviously, fingers and wrist to get the, that rip off the ball. And what about the variations, as I said? A lot of people see for example, on TV, the great Shane Warne in modern white ball cricket, Adil Rashid, etc. The Googlies, sliders, flippers, etc. Do you have that in your, I've in got your the, bag of armory? I've got a couple of sliders, I've got a googly. I've got a couple of grips for the googly, so I'll go one where I use this one finger against the seam like that, and then I'll flick it out like so. But yeah, I have another one where I lock that third finger in there as well, so I can get over, again, try to throw a bigger googly, really. When but, would you when would you actually implement that in say a white ball game? Um, I like to try to get it out nice and early, just to um, let the batter see it early, so I can then use it whenever I feel like to take a wicket. Really, it's more of an attacking weapon for myself. And if a youngster say wants to practice those kind of things, any tips you can give? Um, always think about your back of your hand towards 45, or to pass the keeper's um, left shoulder. That's what I kind of think about. That's how I kind of learn it. I learn it by another ball where I. I used to, it had numbers on it, so you used to have one, two, and then th three with the thumb, or then the four, that finger as well. And then think in the back of the hand towards, towards the keeper or just past the keeper's left shoulder, like I said before. How does arm positions differ for those various deliveries? Um, I try not to differ it too much. As in, like, sometimes thinking when I play at the oval, I try to get my googly to be a bit lower, so it skids. I'm trying to get a bit higher on other grounds and it's a bit bit more bounce to get that variation but yeah I, I don't play around with it too much and the slider um, the slider I have pretty traditional drip um, grip sorry and I use take that finger off the seam there and I'll push it off the lever so it comes out looking like a nearly like that kind of rotation so then hopefully if it misses the seam it'll skid on that way but if it hits the seam sometimes it'll still turn a bit like a leg break so just playing around with your grip sometimes and you just flick it out, out the front, essentially. But also have another one, again, like the googly, similar grip to the googly, but I push so it comes out, out the front more or like off the side of my hand. It just depends how I want to bowl it, really. It depends, like we talked about the wickets, it might be a bit more grippy, so I'll use, I'll flick it, so I try to catch the seam and maybe it turns still, but it'll be always a bit quicker out the front. And then otherwise, you're trying to catch the lever with the other grip. So it drifts. And what about the actual bowling action? When, you, when people talk about fast bowling, they mention brace front leg and going over the top. I've heard similar stuff said about leg spinners. Yeah, a little bit similar. I think for me, it's about accelerating when, as soon as my front foot hits, accelerating to whip, whip over the top and drive and pivot. But yeah, I think it's very similar as in like the mechanics of it is like the jump, not trying to twist too early, not turning your body too early before you take off really. And then when it comes to, say, run up and then positioning at crease, how, if someone is just new to it, how would you explain it to them and how, how they should go about it, etc.? I'd say start at the crease and then work your way back rather than start back and come forward, if that makes sense. So I always think about if I'm like, go back to my basics, I'm work from the crease, bowl leggy, take a couple of steps back, bowl one, 
and then find a nice rhythm which works for you, which gives you the ult uh, maximum spin. That's what I think. I don't if I have to run up off ten steps to get the ball to spin this much, or if I come off two steps and it spins that much. I just think whatever works for you, you just got to find the happy medium, really. And I hear a lot of commentators say you got to find the right pace on a pitch. For laymen such as myself, <laughs> what does that actually mean? And how do you, as a professional spinner, find that? Uh, yeah, it's can, it can be hard some nights. I think you can get an early read, or even off the seamers. If the ball like sitting in the wicket a bit, you probably can be a bit slower. If it's skidding on, you can obviously then decide which, what pace you want to bowl, really. So for me, I just try to watch as much balls off the wicket as possible early on and try to get a read, and then obviously the first one I always kind of start a little bit quicker and see how that reacts and then drop my pace back from there once I've settled in a bit so I can get the pace of the wicket that way. And then when it comes to the mental side of it, spinners, it's just all part of it in terms of getting hit out the park. Is it about just having that big heart and coming back, ball after ball? Yeah, I think you just got to take it with a bit of pinch of salt. Some days you can bowl a really nice ball and end up about 10 rows back and then you can bowl a full toss and it gets caught along on. So I think you just kind of have to roll with the punches really. And the tactical side of things, how does it differ from red to white ball cricket? Um, obviously pace is key, I think. In white ball cricket, you're trying to drive the ball into the wicket a bit more these days, where red ball, you're going up and down. So for me, it's just like always, it's about landing in an area. It's how you get it into the area. Some days you're going to go up into the area, even in white ball, but mainly red ball, you're going to go up into that area rather than white ball, you're driving right into that into that area, if that makes sense. Yeah, Nathan, perfect. Thank you very much. No dramas. Thank you. Thank you.